2010 Toyota Sequoia with a 5.7. This one's got a P2442. But if you have any of these codes, uh, this is the video to watch. Uh, the secondary air injection system is very simple. We have two air injection pumps back behind the right hand fender here. You got one for bank one, one for bank two. Out here we have the hoses coming out of the pumps. This is going to be bank two. The one down here is going to be bank one. In order to go ahead and test the pumps, you can't go and do a functional test without the car running. Who wants to do that and get everything hot? So we got our uh, air pump driver modules over here. And this one's going to be bank one. This one's going to be bank two. Um, in order to power them up, all you need to do is back probe uh, the one the big wire towards the end of the module. Uh, so this would be bank one. And then of course this one over here would be bank two, the white wire. Um, and these pumps should sound like a vacuum cleaner. They should put out a decent amount of air. I'm gonna go ahead and energize pump one. This is a good one. Nice and smooth. This one over here, it sounds pretty gritty. It's bad. Um, well, it's going out. Um, then the switching valves, you have to remove the intake manifold to replace. I tried to do it with the intake in place and I was able to get all four screws out. The problem was the electrical connector was being a pain in the ass, couldn't really get it disconnected. And then the main problem was I could not get it off of this hose. There is no clamp on this hose. So you possibly could have pulled it forward, but I doubt it. Just go ahead and remove the intake manifold. It's not hard. Uh, the manual gives you like three and a half hours. It does not take near that long. It's, it's not hard at all. Fuel injectors don't have to be removed. Uh, no coolant has to be drained. Just take your throttle body, lay it to the side because uh, it's got coolant running through it. When you do change out the switching valves, um, don't pull this bracket off because when you buy them, they come both valves on this aluminum bracket as as an assembly, whether it's Dorman or Toyota. Um, but leave that bracket there because the, these bolts on the pipes here, they like to break. So there's no reason to go ahead and change this bracket. Now this one had the valve stuck open code, so I just put a hose on here with engine off or whatnot, key off, and I was able to slowly blow air through there, so I knew, okay, it is stuck open. But why was it stuck open? Well, when I removed it, here's the valve, and it has this little reed valve assembly that is screwed onto the bottom with a couple screws. Actually, no, it's not. It just sort of sits in there. But anyways, um, this has a little valve here, sheet metal valve, reed valve. And it had foam holding it open. See all these little foam bits? It doesn't take much, and it was stuck open. Well, that foam is a pre-filter on these um, air injection pumps, and that's uh, the same pump that sounded really gritty. So yeah, that filter is coming apart on these things. Now, there is a TSB for these uh, air pumps uh, talking about getting water sucked into the pump, and that might have something to do with it. I think they have an update here, but here's the TSB here for it. So you might read on that. So just reiterate, this is a manual check valve right here. Here's your valve that has to be energized to open. And um, then and also another note on intake manifold removal. The only tricky part is getting this harness off. Um, there's no wires connected to the back of the manifold. It has this, um, you know, vacuum actuated pod. Well, that's, that has a vacuum line that actually stays on the pod. There is no electrical connections back here, but there is a harness that clips onto these two clips. It's actually extremely easy to remove them. You just have to know exactly what to do. If you take your finger and run it along the backside, I'll just spin this around here. You'll notice, <laughs> You'll first, your finger's gonna hit this notch right here, and you're gonna be like, screw with it. Don't don't mess with that one. Go further down, one more step, and you see that little tab there? You can easily, with your finger, index finger, grab and lift that tab, and then they just slide right off. It's very easy to feel, just like that. And that's all you gotta do. Here's the air pumps pulled out. They're not too hard to pull out. Go ahead and disconnect the electrical connectors. This is on the engine side of the fender along with the hoses. It's easiest to just pull pull it all out with, with the hoses so this would still be connected, you know, right there. Um, and it's just a couple nuts, a couple bolts. Uh, there is a uh, fender flare. Now I use the uh, little belt sander here 
and ground down all these little rivets and pushed them out. The thing is, I don't think that's the easiest way to do it because if you see, this is the piece where the rivets were, so this would go up behind here. Um, so this just sits behind this panel right here, the, this, this lower panel that's still here, this just fits behind it. Um, so I think the easiest way, instead of drilling out all these rivets and then having to re-rivet it, is maybe just unbolt this panel here, this lower panel, and uh, get it out of your way. That way you can pull this off. I'm not sure yet. Um, but anyways, uh, what happened here was the foam filter has completely disintegrated. This one was no longer there. It got sucked up and chewed up and uh, is what stuck the uh, valve open, the switching valve. This is what was left, or actually this is like the whole piece. It was uh, just stuffed in there like that. It had come out of place and was about to be uh, sucked in as well. So the solution here is to clean this up and um, RTV that on so that's nice and sealed. And you can see we have plastic pipes that come up here. Uh, it's very important to not get water uh, to suck in these pumps. That's what that TSB is about, is water getting uh, sucked in. I don't see how it can because the plastic fender uh, you know, covers it up pretty good. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the flare off. This is about one inch diameter right about where the flare is. About over here is probably about 15 sixteenths. But over here it's somewhere around one inch. And k and sells a nice clamp-on filter that's uh, it's inch and a half wide. So you can't quite stick two of them on like it is. Uh, you're going to need to slice it down the middle here and spread them open just a little bit. I think I might have about a quarter inch of spread to clamp on those filters. Um, and the part number for those filters is 621370 right there. And uh, O'Reilly's has one, Amazon also sells it. It's worth mentioning if this valve here is stuck open with the uh, foam, don't think that you can just simply disconnect these hoses and blow air through there uh, in order to blow the foam out of the valve and then uh, fix your uh, stuck open valve code because what happens is when that foam sticks this valve open it has the hot exhaust gases that apparently will destroy this seal here on this valve. So this valve is definitely screwed. So yeah, if you have a stuck open code, you're going to want to go ahead and change your valve because it's going to be messed up most likely. This is the bank one switching valve. This one did not have a stuck open code. There was no foam uh, that was holding the valve open. And as you can see, like this one's all messed up too. Make sure when you're going back in with the new one, that your valve plate here. So this is facing the front of the truck. The screws are going to face outward on both of them so here's the two filters clamped on there's the part number k and n one inch inside diameter and uh, what you want to do is just don't cut the cone off but that flare section you only cut a little bit of flare off of there just enough uh, to be able to these things have a pretty squishy base so you can expand it over the flare pop it on so the end of the flare is about right here and that way it clamps on the smooth part uh, and it cannot pull off and then you're going to have to slice it down pretty good ways here, all the way down to here in order to spread it enough. And then now I'm going to take some sandpaper and put some JBL there. Now there was one section I did cut out. Uh, oh, here, here it is. Just a very small section. Cut that out right here to be able to, uh, you know, push the filters up into that location. Gray RTV, both sides works real good for it. After repairs, do this test. It only takes about one minute. Tests everything for you.